we set goals based on what we think we should be doing rather than what we actually want to do. And again, we will touch on that as we go along, but very great observation. It is important to be clear about why you're setting or why you're picking a particular goal. Okay, but yes, um, some of the some of the things identified, you know, you, you've identified some of the issues with these goals that, you know, they're not, they're not clear, they're not um, specific, whether in, 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 in the sense of being um, actually distilling the, the actions that you need to take, or what it is that you're hoping, who you're hoping to be at the end of um, those actions, right? They're not very specific. They're not things that you can measure. For instance, you know, we have one here which says, uh, I want to parent better. What does that mean? Right? How will you know when you're parenting better? How will someone else know when you're parenting better? Right? Like you, you want your goals to be things that you can measure. First off, that you can be clear on, that it, it, you can set clear actions towards, that you can measure, and that you can, you know, that are based on, on timelines that you can, that keep you moving in the right direction. So moving into what we, a, a topic that is probably familiar to most of us, which is SMART goals, right? We, this is, um, this is corporate speak <laughs> and, and we hear this, if you have been in a corporate setting of any kind, you have heard about SMART goals. If you, and you, um, yeah, and you, you, you probably translated that into your life as well. Um, and, and SMART goals are great. Don't get me wrong. Um, SMART goals are great. And, and this, I won't spend too much time here because I think we're all, most of us are familiar with them. Um, but they are, you know, specific. So when you talk about specificity, what does that mean? It means that you are clear on what it is that will be accomplished. Um, measurable you know how you're going to assess and you'll be able to tell whether you're moving towards or away from your goal. Um, action oriented, they identify specific actions that you must take. And then they are realistic. I talked a bit about challenge earlier on and the goals should stretch you, but they shouldn't stretch you to the point where you feel like they are completely insurmountable. They're not things that you can achieve because that will hinder achievement of those goals. And then finally, they should be timely, right? They should be time bound. Um, if you lead, if you don't have um, uh, clear timelines for achieving your goals, then the likelihood is they will never get done, right? Because you'll just keep pushing it out. You just keep pushing it out and, and distractions will come and, and you will prioritize other things. So it's very important that we, you know, we make our goals smart. But beyond that, today I, I want to talk to us a bit about the motivation behind our goals because I believe that it's important that we understand that. So again, I'm you know going back to borrowing from Elliot Berkman and his definition of motivation, and he was the one who who's, who defined goals as I as I set it out earlier, and he defines motivation as the strength of the decision to attain a particular outcome, irrespective of how pleasant or unpleasant the experience of actually attaining it. This image here captures the relationship between motivation and goal setting. And you will see on the far, um, well, on the left side of the, of, of this um, graphic, we see it's extrinsic motivation. And like we talked about, you know, external and introjected are more um, connected to um, externally driven factors. And, and those types of motivations in those in those regions we're not really acting autonomously right we're being driven by something else that is not necessarily something that we value not necessarily it may be but it's usually not necessarily until we get our motivations identified we really are are in the zone where somebody else or something else is driving us um, and the more we move, the closer we move to the right side of this graphic, then the more our goals are what we call as, or what is referred to in the science as self-concordant. And though that's goals that are more autonomous, 
goals that indicate that the higher levels of well-being so you're not worried about what people think you're not worried you're not um you're not um, putting pressure on yourself or feeling guilty you're just you're doing it because it's what you want to do and you know it's the right thing you feel it's the right thing it's important to you to do so they indicate higher levels of well-being and because of that you have a higher chance of achieving those goals so going back to um, you know the talk, I, I do want to center a bit on, on values and, or speak a bit about values. It, it's really important that we identify what's important to that what is important to us, what our values are. When I um, have conversations with people, it, it, I, I'm well, I won't say surprised, but I do find that a lot of people are not aware of what their values are. Right. It's not something that they necessarily think about. And yet these values, our values guide our behavior. We're usually acting as a as a result of what it is that we believe is right, what we believe is important. So shouldn't we know more about our values? Um, and, and coming back to the, the topic of just to give an example, when we consider someone who values um, wellness, physical well-being, right, will prioritize actions that honor that value. So if you value physical well-being, you will, you know, you'll look, focus on good nutrition, you will exercise, right, you will sleep well, right, you will do things that help you honor that value. And if you find yourself acting in a way that is inconsistent with what you value, that there will be a tension, Right. You, you will notice it. And, and we need to be cognizant of that as we set goals. If our goals are not congruent with or aligned with our values, then we can expect that there will be some friction as we try to achieve those goals. And we probably won't achieve them. Right. We will struggle to achieve them because they're just not aligned with what is actually important to us. You see that divide between can and can't? It, it's not that great, right? And those who achieve are those who make the leap, as you said, Sonia, who move from can't to can. And, and that leap starts in your mind. Whether you believe, you know, there's a saying that whether you believe you can or whether you believe that you can't, you're right, right? Whatever you believe, you're right, because you will act in accordance with what you believe about yourself. If you think you can't do it, you will never outperform your beliefs. You will never outperform your beliefs. So we need to check our minds, right? We need to consider, be clear on how we are thinking about the goals that we set. We have to have a level of self-efficacy. We have to believe that we are able to achieve them. It doesn't mean that, I mean, we talked about goals being challenging. So yes, they should be challenging. We may not have everything that we need in the moment to achieve the goals, but we have to believe that we are able to achieve them by, by getting the skills that we need, by getting the tools that we need, by putting the things in place that will help us achieve those goals. But if we don't believe, then we don't even try. What belief does for you, and it helps you, it even helps you to start thinking about different paths, different ways to achieve your goal, right? And then when you encounter, um, when you encounter challenges, again, like Bauer said, you will, you will think about, you might come across some challenges as you move forward. But if you have the belief that you can overcome, then you'll be able to stop and in a, um, and, and think clearly and realistically about those challenges and what you could do and what you could put in place to overcome them. So our minds are the single most important factor or determinant of what we achieve and what we don't achieve. And I can't, you know, I, I, it can't be stressed enough, right? When we believe that we can, then we are, we are able to move forward to do the things that we need to do. And when we do those things, as we make progress, as we achieve, as we accomplish things, there is a feedback loop that is created in our brains that says to us, oh yeah, you did this. 
right? You did this so you can, and then you're, you, you're gingered to do the next thing and to go back and to try again. And you continue to build on your competence the more you do because you believe. But if you don't believe, you don't step out in the first place. And what that says to your mind is, I can't do this. I'm not even going to try because I can't. And if you don't try because you believe that you can't, then guess what? You won't. And then the feedback loop is created in your brain. You didn't because you can't. 